Hi, we're back again to look at some more historical artifacts at random. This is the uh, First World War German Pickelhaub, standard of the ranks issue for the first part of the war with gilt metal mounts. Um, these are common enough that you could probably buy one every other week for the rest of your life if you had the money and uh, desire to so do. This is probably my favorite. I got this years ago. It came out of one of our British Columbia armories and um, it had the information from the owner who picked it up in 1920. German helmet taken at Fest Hubert in June 1915, which is one of our Canadian battles on the Western Front by E.L. McLean, February 1920 is when he annotated, pardon me. And um, it's also marked to a PE, which would be a Pioneer Earsats Company or Battalion number six. And um, it's nice to have that because it's very seldom that one actually gets a helmet from a known battle. They're just of the type from the war and that's it. And I believe, as I recall, I'd have to look at in my inventory to be sure, but I believe E.L. McLean was with the 16th Canadian Scottish or Kilted Regiment out there. Certainly at Festibir, June 15, it would likely be our 1st Division, which uh, which he would be part thereof. Now, one other German headdress. At first glance, this appears to be a standard German Pattern 16 stall helm, worn from then to the end of the war, of a camel pattern, obviously a battlefield pickup, very salty, very relicky, but when you look at the side, it is a cutaway. And as you're probably aware, these came out later in the war due to a series of complaints that it was hard to hear in this helmet. So it was a concession to being able to hear better by cutting this way. Sometimes they, they claim this is for telegraphers and that they could put earphones on. But um, that may have also been so done, but that was not uh, particularly why the helmet was uh, produced in this fashion. It's the only one that I've seen in camel, and I know they mass produce these things today, unfortunately. This is 100% um, original. It's got the original camo. It's got pitting through there, blah, blah, blah. It's, and it came from an old local collection. So it's a nice original war piece. Now, just jumping to World War II briefly, this is a Nazi phosphorus bomb that uh, was dropped over Ireland during the war and uh, went into a residence and was put out by the family. Uh, at that time, they had buckets of sand in the house so that when these landings started to burn, they could smother them with sand, and that was so done. So uh, this is an interesting one that the family decided to keep it as a souvenir. I met uh, the son of the... Uh, sailor that wore this hat. Matter of fact, I got the hat, the uh, jumper, and his bell bottoms. His father was in the Navy in the 1920s, the British Navy. And the first ship he was on was the uh, HMS Hood. And they had the uh, Hood cap tally framed and glued in a frame. So I made him a deal on the uniform and I said, you know, Jerry, you should really um, get the cap tally out and put it with the uniform. And he agreed to. It has been glued, uh, cut. It's in salty condition. I don't think it's all quite there. It still has the knot, as you can see, but it's quite plainly that you can read the HMS hood. And again, it's 100% original. It is from the family. You can see where it was glued and folded over and so forth, but I can quite easily live with that given the background. It wasn't, of course, on the ship when it was sunk, but he, uh, Got off in the late 20s, came to Canada, and actually served in our army in World War II. I guess he had enough of the Navy, and that was it. But so many of these things, if I saw this online, I'd say, hey, forget it. But um, it's nice when you have the, uh, you're lucky enough to get it from the family or in such a manner that the authenticity is basically guaranteed. This uniform group here. These were both worn by the same officer. Uh, the one is a tunic and trousers in an iron blue, and the other is a horizon blue, tunic, breeches, and side cap, all by the same man. What makes this interesting, 
uh, actually is that he was an American by the name of Goodspeed and his name is inside this is a tailored uniform on both the uniforms he was one of the uh, adventuresome Americans that left the States went to Europe joined the French army had enough skill or moxie to become uh, a junior officer and to t serve in a specialist branch like if you were just a dum dum they probably go into the you know infantry or the basics and slug it through but if you had some more technical skills you could go into engineering or artillery and so forth and what happened to him how these came to survive he came back to the states after the war and lived in uh, minnesota and uh he was uh, quite a churchgoer and when he passed on he bequeathed his estate to the minister of his local church well the minister uh didn't quite know what to do with these old military uniforms but he had a brother living in washington state who was a collector so he said how about i send these out to you so he did and through other contacts i met him and um, we did a swap he originally thought this was medical corps um, the French use branch of service buttons and in this case it's cross cannon barrels over a bursting bomb which of course is artillery but um, anyway it's a very nice example of a Lafayette we are here uh, you often hear of the Americans going over to France to join the Ford Legion before they were involved directly in the war but I've never seen any of those uniforms except for this group so it's a the French artillery officer is a nice uniform but with the American Volunteer Association, it's very nice and historical. Thank you.